searching for answers far and wide and I know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father to you are Hello, hello. Thank you for joining us today. Some of you guys are at a watch party, others of you are at breakfast. Some of you guys are in your car, but I'm just so glad that you are joining in today. I'm just grateful, just grateful, honestly. And, and my hope is that, that you would meet Jesus. That's like what the message and the series is about. From his teachings, from his students, by his spirit, and that he would change your life through his word like he did mine. And I honestly believe and pray from the bottom of my heart that Jesus is the best thing that I can present to you as a pastor. It's, he's the best person that I want you to meet for your life, especially in times like these. And these because, you know, there are hard days ahead. I really believe that for us. And I just want to give you guys, uh, before we begin, a, a couple of dates. Uh, next week on Saturday, the outdoor service is on the 12th at 6 p.m. at Radiance Church. Please make sure you put that on your schedule. Make sure you sign up below. And uh, and just, man, just make some expectations. Make an expectation of meeting God there. And we are going to be expecting you. 
to worship together, invite somebody if they would like to come. Our reading plan is starting on Monday the 7th, women's uh, book study starting on the 8th, urban outreach is happening on Thursday. Make sure you schedule your watch parties and, and, and uh, that's what we're doing. Just make sure you schedule it, get together with people, invite some friends, have breakfast, watch a sermon, pray for one another and just keep that simple, right? Because even though we're not always physically together, God's mission is still for us. We're still on that and, and it starts by us always making room for God, always stepping and trusting Him and daring in our faith. Today we start a new series through the letter of the Philippians, uh, the letter of Paul, and it's titled Durable Joy. Just say that with me, Durable Joy. A lasting joy, not this momentary happiness. I believe there's a big difference between happiness and joy. Yeah. Sheryl Crow famously wrote a song. He, uh, she wrote, if it makes you happy, it can't be that bad. If it makes you happy, then why the hell, she says, are you so sad? Are you so sad? She's recognized that being happy isn't always what is best for us because happiness is an emotion in which we experience feelings ranging from contentment and satisfaction to bliss and intense pleasure, whereas joy is stronger than that. Joy is stronger than that. A less common feeling than happiness. We experience joy many times against uh, uh, when, uh, when our selfishness, when we fight against our selfishness and we move into selflessness. And I, I'm just wondering why. Many times we find that joy when we connect our souls to God and, and, and in others, in love and in service. See, Cheryl Crow, she understood that there are plenty of things in the world we can do that might allow us to feel bliss and pleasure and happiness, but ultimately they leave us feeling empty. Ironically, the Apostle Paul's he, Apostle Paul, he knew this. He knew this. I don't know if you've ever experienced that too. Like you really wanted something and you said, oh, if I can only have this. And then you get it. And then you're like, ah, meh, it was all right. Right? You, or you finally achieve that achievement. You get it and you're like, ah, I guess that was okay. And you experience it. See, happiness, because happiness or joy are not the same things. Happiness or joy and joy are not the same things. And the Apostle Paul knew this and talks about it in his letter to the Philippians. Paul takes a moment to, to encourage the believers to endure with joy despite opposition. Think about that. It's written about 62 AD, right, to the house church of Philippi. This is a small group, the Philippi of Macedonia. And I know this letter wasn't written to you, but I believe this letter is for you today. It's for us today. Paul's writing about joy and rejoicing from a Roman prison, from a place where we would say, no way he could have joy. But maybe, maybe you and I, we need to change from seeking happiness to understanding God's joy. So that wherever and whatever situation we're in, we can experience God and we experience his joy. So here's Paul. He's in prison. He reminds us ultimately that ultimately true joy isn't derived from a comfortable circumstance, but when from a living, vibrant communion with Christ. It doesn't come from this discomfort, this, this but this vibrant relationship with Christ. There is no, Paul's not like, look at my house, let us rejoice. Or uh, look at my title that I achieved, let us rejoice. Or look at my bank account, I put a lot of stock in Tesla, let us rejoice, right? No, he's saying, look at Jesus and rejoice. Then he pens the words, to live is Christ. To live is Christ. <coughs> so today, do you need encouragement? Do you need strength? Do you need peace of mind? Are you bound? Are you broken? Do you need fulfillment, health, wholeness? I want to say like Paul says, look at Jesus. And the way and and I hope that we get way more serious about joy, durable joy. So let's read 
Let's read. We're going to go to Philippians chapter 1, and we're going to read from verses 1 to 11. Read with me. I'm going to go, and I'm going to break this down as I'm reading, right? Paul and Timothy, servants of Jesus Christ, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I love how that starts. Paul and Timothy, servants of Jesus Christ. Don't skip over that. That's no little thing. This submission is vital to understanding how God, how they saw God and they saw themselves, right? Paul did not say Paul and Timothy, founders and CEO of the Philippi Church of Macedonia. Two really awesome guys who did epic things for God. No, no. They said servants of Jesus. Jesus is Lord. He's boss of our lives. In the good times and bad times, that means we too serve Jesus in those moments. Christ is Lord. I believe this is why Paul can say boldly, even in these circumstances, in a Roman prison, grace and peace. Grace to you and peace to you. Because it's not his peace, it's not my peace that he can manufacture, right? But a peace that comes from knowing that God is God in every circumstance. And God is not shaken, and if God is with us, we will not be shaken. I have grace and peace in the storms of all of life, and I can give grace and peace in every circumstance. Church, this is absolutely vital. We do not stand on our own strength nor our own goodness or merit. We stand on Christ, His grace, His peace, His life, and His love. And when He says nothing can separate you from that love. See, there's an old hymn that says, In Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. It seems so liturgical, but how true is this? Stand on Christ, look to Christ, because every other foundation in life will fail you. People will fail you, money will fail you, health will fail you, beauty will fail you, work will fail you, pleasures will fail you, but Jesus will not fail you. Jesus will not fail you. And we, as his servants, we share in this very same salvation with Paul and Timothy. Verse 3, verse 3. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel For the from the first day until now. Being confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. We see... Paul's love and gratefulness for the Philippian church here, right? Paul's especially grateful because it was this group of people that was kind and generous to Paul when he needed it most, when he was locked up in this Roman prison. Even though they too were facing hardship, they too were going without, yet they loved on Paul. They served Paul. They were generous to Paul in their need. Think about that. They had a beautiful grace beautiful grace. In 2 Corinthians, Paul talks a little more about this Philippian church, and he says this in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 2-5, he says, in the midst of the very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Think about that. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of all, all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. How beautiful, what a, what a beautiful explanation or, 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 or comments about a beautiful church, right? This house church. Why? Because we are all partners of this gospel. Say partners. <laughs> That's right, partners. We are partners, partakers, participants. The word here, partner, is koinonia, right? Koinonia, this fellowship, but it's more than just getting together. It's more than just fellowship. It's partnership. 
It's partakers, participants. We got stock in this. Uh, we got skin in the game. It's not Paul's church. This is our church. This is not Paul's gospel. This is our gospel. This is not Paul's mission. This is our mission. You and I are partners, participants, not customers and consumers only. We do not come to church. We are the church. We don't only ask, God, what do you have for me? We say, God, I have something for you. That's a totally different understanding of who God is and who we are. Not as just takers, but partakers, partners. See, the enemy of joy is this consumption mindset right in here. This consumption mindset. What's in it for me? What do I get out of this? How does this benefit me? And that's the anti-gospel, the anti-servant, the anti-Jesus message. And this mindset keeps us from the mind of Christ and keeps us for, from daring for Jesus with our faith for the good of others. Because we can't see past ourselves. We're too much in the way. This is not how partners see their world. If that's the case, all you can see is hardship. All you can see is suffering. All you can see is why God has not blessed you more like someone else. Comparison then creeps in and our vision of God narrows down on how God is about me. Have you ever been around someone that just makes everything about them? It gets exhausting, right? They just suck the life out of people. Listen, the fastest way to lose your joy, peace, grace and unity in the fellowship is 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 just to just keep on taking it's this mindset we gotta fight it yet it's our natural lean if you just leave it up to yourself without correction without god's word working in you your natural lean is to it's to take and say what's in it for me so we have to fight this we have to confess this we have to repent and return to god and return into being partners of the gospel Verse 7, is it right for me to feel this way all, about all of you since I have you in my heart and whatever I am in chains or defending or confirming the gospel, all of you share in that grace with me. God can testify how I long for you with an affection of Christ Jesus. And just like we participate in Ethiopia, just in our little way, in our generosity, in our giving, going on mission there, we share in the load, we do our part from here. And as they succeed, as the gospel is preached, as the people are saved, as people are transformed, as the community is served, we share in that grace. It's beautiful. Verse 9, and this is my prayer. This is what I'm asking God on your behalf, Paul saying, that your love may abound more and more in the knowledge and depths of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Man, powerful. This is the prayer of Paul to the Philippian church, and this is Paul's prayer maybe for us and this is my prayer for you that your love may abound that you would grow in godly discernment and you would have fruits of righteousness number one love abound this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in the knowledge and depth and insight he's talking about Christ see that's my goal for you that the more you know Jesus the more you understand Jesus the more you realize Jesus is working all around you the more you train and follow in the way of Jesus the more you trust Jesus with your life in every season in the good and in the hard times your love will begin to abound and grow and you will be like Jesus and your joy will be unshakable your joy will be unshakable in the words of Hebrews 12 2 fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He was focused, and he was filled with the joy set before him. I love it. So look to Jesus. Number two, godly discernment. Discernment is the ability to judge well, right? And godly discernment comes by staying close to God, staying close to God, and living our lives in the face of God, as if God is right here in the room with us, that God is standing right here. When we're, when we're talking to our neighbors, that God is in the room. 
when we're talking to our loved ones, when we're talking to our wife, when we're in an argument, that God is in the room, that we represent God in all circumstances. When we're alone at 12 o'clock on the internet and a pop-up comes up and you shouldn't have seen that, we still represent God and we take care of that as we do. When you can uh, take something and win and no one else would know about it, we still live as if God is right next to us and He is in the room in the face of Jesus. Don't forget that. Make decisions and judgment knowing that God is in the room. Sometimes we compartmentalize our life and we say this is my church life, this is my personal life, this is my work life and, and, and yet wisdom tells us God is God in all of life and we will grow in godly discernment and, and, and make those decisions that way. Number three, filled with fruits of righteousness. Fruits of righteousness, right? I love this. Righteousness comes, and I want you to listen. We're almost done. Righteousness comes when we lean into Jesus to save us, free us from ourselves and our sin. And it's not a one-time deal. We stay there. Jesus continually saves us. Jesus continually cleanses us and then he rebuilds us and he makes us. That process does not end. Yours and mine, our discipleship process does not end. Our salvation process does not end. I love that. It's so imperative that we regularly remember and move in our salvation. We go back into the gospel and the gospel is this. We are more sinful and flawed in ourselves than we ever dared to believe. Yet at the very same time, we are more loved and accepted in Jesus Christ than we ever dared to hope. I love those words by Tim Keller. So in the kingdom of God, we don't walk around all puffed up, or nor do we walk around just broken and just with our head down with a limp. Because of Jesus, we can be fully known, even in the depths of our sins, yet fully loved by the grace of of God. And when you get hold of that good news, you have durable joy. So in Jesus, we can face our past, our mistakes, and we can face our future towards Him. And we can find grace and power to overcome and walk with joy. Durable joy. His joy. I want that for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just pray for our church, God. I pray for every person listening to this message. Maybe they've never heard of Jesus, never known Jesus, but your spirit has drawn them to this moment. And I want to ask you, do you need joy? Come to Jesus. Do you need forgiveness? Do you need freedom for the things that have you, the addictions that grab you, the thoughts that break you? Come to Jesus. Do you need strength to endure because it's, you're going through some hard times? Come to Jesus. I believe that is how you're directing us as a church. Lord God, we are going to make moves and dare by faith as we follow Jesus. And I pray everyone who hears these words that we draw even right now. We pray out loud with our voice, Jesus, you are in this room with me. God, I come to you, Lord. Lord, work on me in the inside. Work on my sin. Work on my doubt. Work on those the anxiety points, the fear points, Lord God. Work on my pride, Lord Jesus, and set us free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys.